All right, we're here with head men's basketball coach Tay Norwood after tonight's game against Cal State Dominguez Hills. Uh, Lumberjacks fell tonight, 89-84 in overtime. Fall to 12-12 overall, 10-8 in conference. Coach, just uh, give us some of your first thoughts coming off this one. Oh, tough one tonight. Game that we controlled for the majority of the game. We had a chance to put it away. We were up three uh, with 10 seconds to go. Malik wins the, misses the back end of the, the two-shot. You make that, it's probably the ball game. Credit to them, they come down, they make a, uh, get a good three in a transition, and then they out-executed us uh, in overtime. Um, so I know you probably don't want to hear this right now, but Sonoma did lose tonight, so they're 9-9 nine nine overall. You guys still have a game up on them for third. SF also lost, so they're behind them. Um, I know it's going to be, you have two more games at home. What's the, the mentality going into these last two games at home, going into senior night next Saturday, just to bounce back on track and see if you can clinch a spot in the conference tournament? Well, we're gonna, obviously I'm going to watch the film uh, tomorrow and then go over with the team, try to get better for some of the things that we didn't uh, do well. I thought we played play well enough to win a game. Um, we missed, just missed a ton of free throws down the stretch. Mala missed a bunch. Cam missed a, missed missed one. You know, Malik, who's shooting eighty eight percent from the free throw line, I thought was gonna close it out with the two free throws with the, with the second free throw. And, and credit to him, they, they they got it down and got a good shot. They made a good shot and got us to overtime and, and won the game. So credit to them. Get back to the drawing board and get ready for San Bernardino. That's all I got. Um, Coach, I, I guess one of the things I just want to, it seemed like Cal State Dominguez Hills, um, one of the things that seemed like capitalized for them was three-point shooting in particular, what appeared to maybe be missed rotations. I guess I was just curious if maybe that was what you saw or what, what you felt like, you know, if, though I know the one T that was, you mentioned the transition three, that was the last one, but there was also the one that tied it up 67-67 um, and, and some other ones. I just was wondering, you know, it felt like for the most part you guys actually – on top of that, but then these kind of key missed rotations maybe cost you. I wasn't sure if that's how you saw it. Uh, yeah, we were we were supposed to switch um, one through the one through four ball screen action, and uh, I think Bryce Mitchell and uh, Marlon got misconnected in, in what we were trying to do, and I gave them a little bit of room for them to get a wide open three. Um, it's a defensive lapse that that cost us. But with that all being said and done, I thought we executed well enough down the stretch defensively. We took, like I said, we had a three-point lead. Malik got a chance to close it out. We just didn't get it done. Um, another question, I mean, I just think offensively, I know that maybe the, the um, guys were a little bit out of sync. I know, I know Malik, I think, did an awful lot to really uh, make key back buckets um, with his own opportunities. Um, and Ian hit some open threes, but for the most part, fellow guys were kind of out of sync. Maybe you know, kind of just you know, good ball, good off ball movement. But but sometimes guys couldn't find those guys that were making that off ball movement. I mean, uh, what do you, what do you? I guess what were your thoughts just as far as trying to get the offense on track? But it felt like maybe it was out of sync a bit tonight. We shot forty three percent for the game and forty one percent from the, from three point line. I'm not sure we were so much out of sync. Okay. Um, we didn't we didn't guard well enough. And we did guard late and had a chance to win the game and put ourselves in position to win the game. And we missed opportunities at the free throw line, which came back to bite us in the foot. I mean, that, that's in a nutshell, especially in, in the regulation. I mean, Malik hits a free throw, the game's over with. No matter what they do. They got out of timeouts. He missed a free throw, they foul up six, it's a two-possession game, with three, two or three seconds to go. They did a good job of driving us, dribble driving the basketball, and we allowed them to get too much too much deep penetration into the lane. And, uh, and credit to them, they made their laps, and we didn't make ours late. They made all their free throws, it seemed like, down the stretch. You know, they were 19 for 22 from the free throw line. We were 14 for 21. That's the difference in the game. Uh, one more question is about overtime. I mean, uh, I just was wondering, was it talked about all with, with Isaiah Morris and Andre Ball both at four fouls? Um, you know, uh, was there any kind of discussion of maybe trying to get them to foul, going at them offensively, trying to see if you could draw a foul and foul them out? Yeah, we, we went back to our original five and we threw the ball down to Cam Timmons three times in a row. We got two buckets and got fouled. Yeah. I mean, we knew they wouldn't, we knew they would play soft. Um, that's why we, that's why I went back with the original lineup. You know, we had a boneheaded mistake to start. We get the jump ball and throw it to the backcourt. 
we can't make it up, but it happened. Um, so we, we, we down one possession right there after winning the jump ball. Um, and they, they did a good job of driving us. We, we, didn't, we didn't do a good job of, of guarding the basketball um, and taking pride in guarding the basketball like we did at the end of the regulation. And it hurt us. Um, just last question. I'll just coming to that point. I mean, um, coming out of this, I know you got to review the tape, but but uh, does there any added? Obviously, just coming out of this game, added sense of urgency heading into these final four games in, in those next two games at home. Every game is urgent. I, you know, taking one game at a time, but they're all urgent to win because we haven't clinched a spot yet. So until we clinch a spot, there's a sense of urgency. Um, every time we 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 lay some up and play, we're not. We're not good enough as a unit yet to just turn it on, so it's gonna it's gonna take a great effort from us collectively in order for us to win games, especially close games. Thank you, Coach. Hi, Coach. It seemed like for the majority of the game, your team was in control and playing really well. What do you think just sort of changed down the stretch? We got uh we got impatient. I thought we got impatient one or two possessions, but like I said. I'm contradicting myself because the last minute we took absolutely control, complete control of the game. We got the stops we needed. We get fouled. We go up two. Malik knocks down two. We go up four. We give up a bucket. We come down. They foul. He gets one out of two. They make a last second three. You know, I'll go back and watch the three and how they got wide open. It was off a miss. I was in transition. It was in scramble mode. Credit to them. Um, and then in overtime, they just really dribble drive the ball. Um, and, and got their feet in the paint and was able to make some big baskets. Yeah. Uh, my other question is, coming out off this game and going into your next games, uh, what's what are some main focuses for you that the team needs to work on? Uh, you know, we got we to do a better job of sitting down and guard, and we got to do a better job of rebounding. And obviously, you know, Got to make shots. We'll get back to some of the things that we do fundamentally. Um, we'll get prepared for San Bernardino and try to uh, knock off a ranked team, uh, off, knock a ranked team off on our home court. All right. Thank you.